Welcome to the MSME Radio Network, a division of the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network. The following program broadcast is an original creation by the broadcast entity. Discussion within the following broadcast should be used for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice or consultation. Before considering application of any broadcast content in the following program, please consult your health care provider. If you feel you are having a medical emergency, please contact your local health services for immediate assistance. MSME Media and the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network do not guarantee or warrant the accuracy of information in the broadcast to follow. The Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network provisions broadcast services to program hosts. Information discussed in the broadcast does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or goals of the network and are solely those of the show broadcast hosts. Should you wish to host a broadcast, please visit our website at msmemedia.com and submit a request to become a program host. We thank you for listening to the MSME Radio Network. Enjoy the show. Hey guys, you're listening to Straight Up with MS and all its crazy little circles on MS and Me Radio. Brought to you by the MS Global Support Network. I'm your host. Patty Long at MS and It for Life. Um, I don't know if you can tell by the sound of my voice or not, but I have a cold today. And, you know, a cold is another stressor in MS, even though it's just a cold. Um, but we'll get on to, to that subject later. Um... First, I wanted to go over, you know, a little bit about what we've been talking about these past few weeks, and and um, we started out with how poor sleep and exhaustion is defeated by intermittent intermittent exercise, which means it's a little here and a little there throughout the entire day. It's not, you know, an hour at the gym or anything hard like that as a matter of fact um you can do everything at home you don't even need a gym you barely need anything um to be able to to do the types of exercise that will help you defeat the exhaustion and regain quality sleep and regain energy so exercise is really key to that and um i've pretty much got everything i need i've got a set of resistance bands well up to the reds the reds the hardest level i have and it's still you know more than enough so um or maybe the green is the tougher one yeah i guess green is tougher than red oh it goes yellow red green black and um, I don't have the black bands but in any case I've got resistance bands and I've got my pedals um, and I've got a um, a ball that I can sit on a, I, I don't know the name of it but it's a you know a big giant exercise ball and I can sit on it or I can um, and, and bounce which helps my thighs and my balance. I can just sit on it for my balance. I can try and do push-ups with it supporting my thighs, you know, which is kind of um, a good way for me to exercise places that otherwise I'm not getting enough. So there's a few different exercises I can do on that. And... um There's only one thing that I would like to have that I don't have, and that's a balance board. And the only reason why I want one of those is because they're fun to play on. But most of them don't even take any of that. It's it's intermittent, so, you know, five minutes here, five minutes there. Um, Or you can even build up, you know, I couldn't last five minutes when I first started. So, you know... you find your starting point and you don't want to exhaust yourself at all you want to just you know do a little something 
and um, that little bit of exercise will help you build your energy instead of depleting it um, and then you get better quality sleep from that uh, and I've talked about depression you know which is anxiety and sadness and anger and these also cause exhaustion and I've, I've told you some of the things I try to do to keep depression at bay um, not that it's easy um, but things that I do that really help and um, I've told you those things that give me motivation and everybody finds their own things to do and their own motivation and the hardest part about doing any of it is getting started and so today is the day to start and you wake up each morning thinking today is the day to start and and, and that's where I'm still at with trying to think that way <coughs> even though I've got this you know really bad cough and cold thing going on and so you stay motivated and today you know I came outside to do the show and I'm sitting here realizing that winter is upon me and so I thought it was a good time to to kind of talk about temperature intolerances and how this plays into everything because um temperature and child intolerances aren't just about the heat but let's start with the heat um many people with ms they um get overheated very quickly and this is because their body temperature actually goes up it's not you know like you just got sweaty um, it's your body temperature actually going up and I have found that it is worse for me if it's a day where the dew point is high now a lot of people talk about humidity and I don't think my humidity is super low but our dew point in the summertime usually is and so as long as I stay out of the sunshine I'm okay um, if the dew point is high then the air is thick and it's thick with all this dew water you know and that's why it's called a dew point um, and the thickness kind of elevates the heat and so on those days you know I can't you know it it elevates that heat for me because it 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 makes it so that whatever functions my body is supposed to do don't work and so does being in the direct heat of the sunshine which where I live it's a stingy sort of sunshine usually and that stingy sunshine will knock me out in a minute and it's basically the same feeling as heat exhaustion would be and you just kind of collapse and you can't do anything but then once you get cooled back down then you feel better so um, one of the hardest things for people with MS to do is actually to take a shower um, taking a hot shower is unbearable to a lot of people and what I have found is that my definition of a hot shower has changed so I, I remember it wasn't long ago um, I got a phone call from a friend of mine asking about PML but somehow we ended up on the subject of taking a hot shower and because I said the word hot she thought I had no heat intolerance but the thing is my perception of what hot means has changed and also I have figured out ways to be able to up the water temperature just slightly without causing me a problem and going back to the dew point and the thickness you know keeping that 
thickness out of the air in the shower is super important for me. So I leave the bathroom door cracked just a little bit. I don't want it wide open because I don't want it cold, you know, which after getting out of the shower, I would freeze if it was wide open. So um, I, I just have it cracked a little bit. And that lets some of that steam out. And then I use the shower curtain and I'll have it closed all the way. And then I'll step out of the hot, hot-ish, I should say, hot-ish water. And I'll fan that curtain a time or two and get the steam out of the shower. And I can take a hotter shower that way. Now, my water temperature is set lower because when I first moved here, um, my youngest was four years old and um, or was about to be four years old. He wasn't four yet. And I didn't want him or his older sister or his older brother to accidentally burn themselves. So our our thermostat for our water heater is set to a temperature where you cannot get burnt. And as a result, back in the day, I would crank up all the way to hot to take a shower. And, um, you know, our thermostat hasn't changed any, but my body's thermostat has. So... I no longer can turn it all the way up like that. I turn it much lower than that. But to me, it's still a hot shower because it's warmer than my body temperature. Um, so it's still, relatively speaking, a hot shower. And it's, it's just my perception of what a hot shower is that has changed. And it's kind of crazy, but yours will change too with time if you allow it to. But you have to allow it to. You have to not complain about the hot shower and I can't take a hot shower. But you find ways around the issue like the fanning of the curtain, the leaving the door cracked. All these things that make it steamy hot and make it harder to breathe and it's just keeping yourself out of that situation and those are, are my two biggest tricks and then you know of course my perception over time has changed I also try and do my shower all in the same order so I wash my hair first and then I condition it and then I get the soap and I get soap up and rinse off and then after that I shave and I don't worry about shaving my legs every day ladies because you know what that is ridiculous that is become ridiculous for me to try and shave my legs every day or every other day or every shower which honestly I don't even bother with a shower every day I don't go somewhere every day um, and I don't get dirty most days, you know, so I don't really need a shower every single solitary day. And I remember when I was little and I would stay at my grandparents' house, it was like against the law in their house to take a bath every day. Um, you weren't supposed to waste your water. And my grandparents grew up, at least my grandfather did, in a whole different era. And going through the Depression and living through that, um, you learned you didn't waste a single thing. So, you know, we got a wash rag and we washed our face, we washed our hands, we washed our arms, you know, and, and did that. And we didn't take an actual bath each and every single day. And so I know that there's nothing wrong with this. This is how I was raised. And then I'd go home and it would be time for school to start back. And I would take a shower every day because every day I was going out and getting dirty. 
I wasn't going to the pool and swimming every day. Um, and we rinsed off after we got out of the pool. So, you know, we got all that chlorine and stuff out of our hair. But um, it it just wasn't something that we did. So it doesn't really bother me that I'm not now. And again, it's my perception that has of these kinds of things that has changed because from the time, you know, I moved out on my own, I'd been taking a shower every single day. And that's just not practical anymore. You know, it's, it's just not. And um, so I have to think about this, you know, do I really want to do this today or do I want to do that today and make those kinds of decisions. Um, along with heat intolerances, though, are cold intolerances. And the same thing happens, only the opposite. Um, your body temperature actually drops. And when your body temperature drops, it is very hard to get warmed back up. So that's first thing, um, a word of caution to people who have these cold intolerances because they may come on slow. It may even come on like mine did where I didn't even know it was cold. So I could go outside and it's 25 degrees out and go run outside in a nightgown because I saw the p pond of mine that I had built was frozen over on top and I wanted to make sure that there was a good hole so that nobody would die underneath this ice and be out there chipping away at the ice and and everything you know a good 20 minutes 30 minutes before I even realized I was out there with nothing but a nightgown on and it's 20 something degrees here I am chipping ice away so it may come across to start with as not even feeling the cold and then all of a sudden the cold is just ridiculous and your whole body is frozen kind of from the inside out and all your muscles get stiff and you can't hardly speak and your teeth are not even chattering it's way colder than that so um and this can be just as dangerous and I just dropped my phone I do that a lot don't I um but in any case a cold intolerance can be just as dangerous as a heat intolerance. You know, you can pass out from the heat. Um, you can go into heat exhaustion. You can have a heat stroke from, from heat intolerances and your body temperature rising like that. And um, with the cold, you can do the exact same thing and go into hypothermia more quickly. Now, Dr. English, my doctor at the MS Center of Atlanta, has warned me not to ever, ever, ever put my hands in water or my feet in water if they get cold. Now, the reason for this is because it will burn. Now, I already knew this when he told me. And I looked at him and I just kind of, uh, yeah, I figured that one out. Because, you know, that's sort of, you put your hands in warm water and it warms you up, right? Well, no. You put your hands even in cold water and it will burn. <laughs> I mean, just incredibly burn. So, um, if you come across a time like this that you have developed cold intolerance, do not put your hands in cold water. Um, I have also tried about to sit on top of a fire. That didn't warm me up either. Um, and I sat there and I spasmed out for a good couple of hours before, um, before I, I started to warm up a little bit. So sitting in a fire doesn't work either. So what does work? Well, for me, what works is layering up with all kinds of layers on top of layers on top of layers. And I make them kind of thin layers and I don't hold them tight. I, I keep them a little loose. And um, so I'll, I'll put on all these layers and these layers will warm me up the most quickly. 
um, it's still not super quick. It's not as quick as cooling down after you've been um, suffering from the heat. It, it's just not. Now with the heat comes a lot more exhaustion and with the cold comes a lot more muscle spasms and pain related issues. Now when it comes to muscle spasms and pain, that's a whole circle by itself. And to relieve one, you have to relieve both. And if it's pain due to muscle spasms caused by the cold, you warm your body up. And that should help relieve the muscle spasms, which should help relieve the pain. And when you start getting warmed up, you can try doing some stretches. And if you get them in your low back like I do, remember to try and sit on your butt and not on your tailbone. If you're sitting on your tailbone, it's going to make it worse. So try and remember to sit on your booty. And um, so as I sit here on my booty and not on my tailbone, and I put that little arch in on my back, I can stretch it and then I can hump it around the other way and that just came out wrong but um, you know you do the cat stretch and then you you pull your shoulders back and you put that arch back in and you do this really slowly but you don't necessarily need to hold it in one position if you can that's great if you can't that's fine too because you have to start somewhere um, we always have to start somewhere and getting started is what it's the hardest part and um, my grandpa used to tell me that all the time when I didn't feel like doing something and <coughs> <coughs> excuse me goodness my cough hot my cough it's still here um, but uh, the hardest part, my grandpa would say, was getting started. And if I was procrastinating because I didn't want to do my chores, he would remind me of that. And then he'd look at me. And, you know, he didn't give you a really stern look necessarily, but you didn't question him either. And, or at least I never did. I never saw a reason to. And I always thought about what he said. And he was right. The hardest part was getting started. Oh my gosh, getting started. So, um, you know, when you're feeling those spasms and pain. And you need to stretch. You know, you need to stretch. And as you warm up and you're stretching and you start to stretch you start to feel less pain and then those muscle spasms kind of diminish and and go away which is you know what we want we want less pain and, and that's just things I do with my legs um, I will pull my feet towards me and push my knees downward and pull my put and point my toes and leave my my legs straight and then pull my toes back towards me again and push my heel out and again with my knee straight now if my muscles are too tight and my knee doesn't go all the way straight that's okay it will and I'll give it time to warm back up now if and there was a time when these spasms were just round the clock and if you're having problems like that, then you might need some medicine to help. But remember, when it comes to taking medicine for muscle spasms, most of them come with drowsiness as a side effect. Now, this creates more what? More exhaustion. And so we want to cut down on exhaustion because that's a big part of our problem. And these muscle spasms and this pain this circle also creates exhaustion so we're better off trying to stretch and take a 
emergency type muscle res relaxer or take um, something that is just a mild, mild, mild muscle relaxer. I mean, baclofen. I'll go straight to sleep. It'll knock me out. And I won't wake up for a good day. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous. Now, it doesn't necessarily have that effect on everyone, but it does on me. So, you want to be careful and make sure that the muscle relaxer that you might be taking isn't causing more exhaustion for you to try and defeat. Better to try and stretch out those muscles and see if you can take less and stretch more than it is to take just the medicines or take more medicine and stress stretch less. Um, just my opinion, but it's what I have found to be quite true is that exhaustion just builds upon itself and starts all of these crazy little circles and it just goes round and round and round so the exhaustion is the one we want to defeat and you do it by exercising so if you're having muscle spasms stretching is a type of exercising so do stretches for them and it's like killing two birds with one stone you know you you're you're working on two circles at once instead of just one so um doing this inter intermittently and i'm having a hard time talking today between the cold and the fact that winter is coming upon us and so i am having um cold issues cold intolerance issues and i do like to sit outside and do my shows and I touched something y'all that was metal so it was cold and I'm all bundled up and I've got blankets and two pairs of pants and two shirts and so I'm bundled up out here but when I touched something cold guess what you know it's a da 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 and every time I touch something cold it starts and so I wrap up a little more and add another layer and then when I get warmed up good, I start peeling off layers very slowly. I've also been stretching a little bit as we talk, especially in my low back, because that's a major place, and in my legs, because that's another major place for me to stretch, um, and my feet. And then I've also been pedaling a little bit. And I only do these things for a couple of minutes at a time. But I've been doing them a couple of minutes here and a couple of minutes there since I came out here. And I probably came out here a good 30 or 40 minutes before I started talking um, as I was trying to collect my thoughts. Oh my gosh, my time is up. So remember, the hardest part about any doing anything is getting started. So today is the day to start. Let me thank Right quick, let me thank Erica Lyons Richardson for creating this wonderful community. Go to um, the MS Global Support Network um, and check out the site. There's all kinds of awesome information out there on it. Um, and I want to thank you guys, of course, my listeners. Remember, always, always and forever love yourself. And by that, I mean your whole self, including that part of you that is this crazy, crazy disease. Um, accept it, get along with it, and then you'll own it. And um, I hope the rest of your day is awesome. Talk to you next time here on MS&Me Radio. Bye, guys.